Hello colleagues. Let's talk today about uh, another very typical case, which is uh, people tricking, uh, but not in the warehouses or assembly plants, but more in the, the exhibitions, museum, offices, uh, let's say less industrial areas. Um, it may seem to be an easier task, but in fact it is not. Um, and the complexity stems from the uh, complexity of the area, mostly. So it could be a smaller area, uh, but um, much more complex in terms of obstructions, in terms of external noise, in terms of unpredictability. Um, this particular case is a bit special because there was only one um, mobile object, which is pretty unusual because uh, typically you need to track you know, dozens of people in the same area, like visitors of museums or similar. Uh, but in this particular case, um, it was only one, but very special. So let's talk about the case in details. Um, what is it? It was about their very precise tracking of uh, a guide into uh, an exhibition, a special exhibition. And um, the guide would be followed by the virtual avatar. It's a basically a projection on the wall that would follow you when you walk uh, through the exhibition. And the exhibitor would be showing and telling, you know, the story about the exhibits and the virtual avatar would, uh, you know, complement and walk uh, next to, to their human. So this is why, um, unlike in our previous case, when the latency wasn't so important, but the accuracy was, uh, in this case, we should have uh, met both uh, high accuracy and at the same time, um, a low latency. Unfortunately, we cannot share much more about uh, the case, uh, uh, but overall this stuff I just explained and you can see uh, typical tricking and typical behavior in this video. So you have a floor plan. Okay, that was the old video. You have a, you have a uh, badge, which is the mobile tracking device on the person. It could be another type of uh, you know, mobile um, beacon. It could be installed on a tablet, for example, or it could be uh, even a jacket if it's, you know, special exhibition. Uh, but in the majority of cases, uh, a badge is recommended. So in this video was shot a couple of years ago. Now we have an improved and updated version of, of the badge. So that was a recommended way uh, for the mobile beacon. So you have a badge, you have a map, and you have a mobile beacon. And as you see, in this case, the latency was around two seconds. The accuracy and uh, overall performance is about the same, uh, but the latency in this case wasn't the, uh, the task and was relatively high. In this newer case, the latency was around uh, half a second with uh, real-time player enabled. Without the real-time play en enabled, it could be e even less. It, it would be a quarter of a second. So effectively, with real-time player, you can choose between uh, uh, more robust tracking and uh, high latency at the same time or lower latency and increase it for example to even half a second or even two seconds and in this case it would be very smooth and very robust like in this case as well um, so wh what are the problems when you deploy the system like this of course it's indoor positioning first of all because there are not too many solutions that can meet uh, um, several requirements. What are those requirements? Now, first of all, high accuracy. Of course, my own mind indoor GPS is specializing in a uh, high precision indoor positioning system. In this case, ultra wide band would be a nice option because uh, they didn't require centimeter level. So let's say 10 to 30 centimeters that ultra wide band can provide was sufficiently good for them. In some cases, optical could be an option, but in this particular case, it was pretty tough um, uh, because there was a uh, flasher lights and uh, you know most of the time it was a dark 
uh, exhibition. Uh, very light music could be uh, a problem for our system because it's acoustic based, but luckily it wasn't uh, because, again, the system is designed to withstand uh, loud acoustic noise unless it goes to ultrasound. But even for ultrasound, we have many ways to uh, combat um, uh, those uh, noises. Uh, what other uh, problems? Uh, of course, abstractions. Line of sight, line of sight, line of sight is a must. This is why we employ several techniques uh, to combine uh, to combat the abstraction. But in general, the abstraction and non-line of sight is uh, probably the biggest um, the biggest problem in any indoor positioning system for our case, but as well for ultrawide band and of course for optical as well. So in one way or another, you do need to um, uh, prevent non-line of sight situation by putting more beacons or by employing some other techniques. Uh, so what, what is the solution? Solution is very typical in terms of uh, used equipment. Station beacons are super beacons installed on the, on the walls, high on the walls, because installing high on the walls, allowing their lower level uh, lower probabilities of abstraction. The modem, the central controller of the system. Uh, additionally, since there were many walls and uh, some of these walls, even uh, though they were glass walls, they were coated with uh, metal, a thin metal. Uh, this is why uh, it wasn't um, uh, radio transparent walls. So, um, uh, the radio coverage was an issue at some point of time. This is why we had to install a full-size antennas and uh, place the modem in their you know, optimal place in the center, just to make sure that the radio coverage is not an issue at all. Even though the dimensions of the territory was relatively small, it was just 35 by 35 meters. But as I mentioned in the beginning, in many cases, uh, smaller territory doesn't mean their network uh, is actually simpler. And this is the new badge, and of course it's based on MiniRx, and uh, the improved badge has, uh, uh, you know, split Omni inside the strap. So on the left side and on the right side there are microphones, and you can put the stripe in one way or another. At least one of the microphones would be facing outwards on each side of the neck. So it means that your own neck or, or your own body wouldn't uh, create non line of sight uh, situation and this is why uh, and this is one of the methods we uh, strongly suggest uh, for a non line of sight uh, situation uh, when the chances are high so use uh, uh, batch for example in this case as as usually our system is based on the time of flight of ultrasound uh, to the station beacons and calculating of the position of the mobile beacon using trill iteration. It's a highly pre uh, precise method of calculating. This is why we suggest it every time when uh, high precision is required. So uh, this is a very typical performance before any kind of real-time player or any smoothing or any filtering applied. Oh, actually filtering is applied. For example, here you don't see uh, some of the location updates. Um, no, simply because the system was not able to uh, determine the location and filters out. We could provide the raw data, or actually we do provide the raw data, so your system can pick up the raw data and apply your own smoothing mechanism or filtering mechanism, or even, um, you know, try to uh, estimate the position based on the sum data, for example, distances. This is location, but distances to the station beacons we do provide, so it means that you can employ uh, that data and uh, try to recover the locations even in, you know, a difficult non-line-of-sight situation. So this is a typical view inside our dashboard. Uh, we cut uh, all the details outside, so this is kind of in, in the area. So as you can see, it has uh, 11 submaps. It's relatively small. Uh, exhibition, 35 by 35 meters, but 11 submaps. Why? Because it's complex. This is the mobile beacon. This is the track of the mobile beacon. The update rate was around 4.9 hertz, so 5 hertz. Uh, the beacons are placed, uh, now you'll see on the next uh, screens, the beacons are placed uh, all over the area in order to provide the main requirement. And the main requirement in order to position the mobile beacon, the mobile beacon must be heard or must hear 
two or more station beacons with direct line of sight within uh, 30 meters away. We deployed the inverse architecture and uh, we deployed uh, fully overlapping TDMA submaps. Let's look at them. So this is their view on the same um, territory, uh, but with the floor plan uploaded to the system. Uh, and, uh, okay, in this case, there was up to 12, or actually 13 submaps because we start from zero. And the real-time player enabled. So it's much, much smoother, as you see. So those uh, uh, omissions in the tracking are not uh, visible anymore. Uh, but the real-time player brings their additional latency. As said, so uh, for example, if you have TDMA2 uh, and uh, this TDMA2 um, brings, um, uh, it doesn't increase the latency, but the real-time player does. And uh, for example, it uh, first um, uh, collects the, the location dates of four measurements and only then shows. So effectively you have around or latency of four. So if you have four hertz or five hertz, then the latency would be four divided by four, so around one hertz. So about one second latency. It was okay for this because it wasn't uh, too fast moving, but you could reduce uh, their TDMA uh, level, uh, so, sorry, uh, real-time player level to two or three. Uh, it will be less smooth, uh, but the latency would be decreased proportionally. Or you can increase the smoothness even further uh, so it can tolerate even you know longer jumps or longer emissions, but the latency will be longer. So it's up to you. And of course, we stream out raw data, uh, uh, data after real-time player, and so forth. So you can choose uh, depending on your needs. Um, now let's talk now the most details about the system. As you see, the system is pretty complex. Uh, what is the complexity? As I mentioned, complexity comes from the complexity of their uh, of the area uh, so there's an entry and the exhibition goes or let's say the exhibitor goes this way and uh, uh, there are a lot of obstacles uh, there are exhibits which are floating in the air thus for example when you're in this area uh, this beacon which would be covering in one of the TDMA slots wouldn't be seen in this uh, because there will be uh, you know clear non line of sight situation for this and this moment beacon 4 and beacon 6 would be serving whereas beacon 7 wouldn't be possible but when for example um, uh, sometimes you know people are surrounding your uh, exhibitor and uh, then none of these beacons uh, are seen uh, or let's say seen vaguely so this why you may have no line of sight of situation. But again, we combat it uh, with two uh, ways, two major ways, actually. One is uh, uh, Batch. Batch has a split omni microphone on the left side of your neck and on the right side of your neck. It's on the neck, so it means that the chances that you obstruct with your own body are low. For example, compared to a uh, beacon which you can put in your chest pocket. No, in this case, half of your time, uh, your own body would obstruct the beacons from the back. Now, this is possible, but not really recommended because in this case, and the tracking would be more pure and you would need to install even more beacons in order to provide the coverage. So this white badge is more optimal solution. The second major optimal, um, let's say the method to combat uh, their non-line of sight situation is full overlapping uh, submaps. So for example, beacon number four and beacon number six are covering this area and beacon number five and beacon number seven are covering exactly the same area. Why? Now, if you are facing this wall, then these beacons would be uh, tricking you. Yes, it would be tracking only half of the time because uh, another half because the, the split between this time division multiple access submaps is 50 50 so one two one two one two one two and uh, but at least you would be covered 50 percent of the time and uh, the real-time player would smoothen the missed uh, location updates if you are in a good shape and let's say visible by uh, beacon four and six five and seven then there will be no 
uh, skipped or missed uh, location updates and you'll be tracked either from the left or from the right, from the left or from the right. And if there is a minor discrepancy in location from this submap to this submap, then real-time player once, once again would smoothen uh, this. But usually uh, you align during the network playing so that there will be no jumps, no like, you know, this... Uh, kind of zigzag type of uh, behavior. No, it's pretty pretty straightforward even without, uh, like you have seen here, for, for example, there's no jumps between the location updates, even though this and this was measured by the opposite um, submaps on the opposite walls. Um, so what, what else? It's very important to see the service zones. So service zones are basically defining where their submap is uh, responsible for a particular tracking. For example, uh, submap consisting of beacon four and six, this is the serving service zone for this submap. And for five and seven, this is the service zone for this submap. So they are overlapping. And um, it's pretty tricky to make these arrangements because um, when their area is large, um, you can reuse the same frequencies over the distance. So for example, distances between these beacons uh, are less than 30 meters. And if it's less than 30 meters, their signal from this beacon may fly to this area and may basically interrupt the tracking. Luckily, it flies after the signal uh, of, of this beacon. So we basically neglect it because it's already too late. We are getting the signal either from this beacon or from this beacon and their flying in comes already later when we have determined the location based on this. Um, but nevertheless, it's pretty complex because uh, too many beacons are condensed in the small area and, um, you know, thorough network planning is required. So this is why for smaller maps consisting of you know one two sub maps uh, our customers can do this by themselves but for more complex uh, maps like this one we recommend that we do it uh, because again we are far more experienced and we can do this much faster than you can do so if your case is similar to this for example tracking of people on the exhibitions or um, all kind of conferences or museums and uh, you may be interested in this, please don't hesitate, contact us and send us an email to info at moralmind.com or visit our website www.moralmind.com and we would be happy to answer your question and offer the most optimal solution for your particular case. Thank you very much.